like to have multiple portal nodes for an on-prem environment, you must first set up a cluster. In this video, I'll walk through setting up a portal cluster using Portal 9.5 CF196. I'll be following the portal cluster guide, which I've included a link in the description below for your reference. So at this point, I have already installed Portal 9.5 CF196 and performed a database transfer. I have other videos for these topics in the description below if you have not performed these tasks yet. So jumping into Chapter 3, I first need to install my Deployment Manager, or more commonly referred to as my DMGR. I won't perform any pings or network tracings because I know both my Portal and DMGR machines have the proper network configurations, but you must make sure that each machine can communicate not only to others, but to themselves as well using local hosts and their fully qualified host name. The first 20 steps go over the installation of the WebSphere application server on the DMGR machine. Now I have the setup files from my Portal 9.5 package already on the DMGR machine. If you need help locating the Portal software, please refer to the video in the description below on downloading Portal software. So first, I'll install IIM from the appropriate OS directory. In my case, I'm running Linux. Once IIM is installed, I'll open the preference and under repositories, I'll add the WebSphere application server and the JDK packages. Now I'll click install. I'll select all the packages. I'm modifying the application server to a custom directory path, but this isn't required. However, you will need to know the path later on, so remember where you installed the app server. And now to install. When the installation is done, select None and click Finish. In the next set of steps, I need to access the configuration wizard on the portal machine. If you need help accessing the configuration wizard, please see the video in the description below on how to start the configuration wizard server. I already have my configuration wizard running here, so I'll navigate to set up a cluster and create a deployment manager. All that looks correct. So I'll move on to the next step. My DMGR will be on a remote server. My portal host name is correct. Now I need to set the DMGR host. And I'll modify the DMGR location to a custom directory path. Also, I need to specify the custom directory path where I installed the app server earlier. And I'll use WPS admin for the username and password. Now, creating the DMGR requires three manual steps. So first, I'll download the scripts and copy them over to a temporary directory on the DMGR machine. Now, I'll unzip the compressed file. Going back to the cluster guide, I need to modify the permissions of the scripts directory, rename and run the create remote deployment manager profile script. Now these scripts and even future steps can take anywhere from two to 10 minutes or more depending on your hardware and network. So in this video, I'm just gonna skip over that time. With the script complete, I can mark step one, done. Now per the guide, I need to ensure that the DMGR is stopped.
and it does appear to be stopped. I now need to copy the files for dmgr.zip file from my portal machine to my dmgr machine. Now I need to move it to the app server directory and unzip it. On step 39, I need to copy the metadata XML file to the correct DMGR profile path since I did not use the default DMGR name. In my scenario, there is a case difference in the letter D. With that done, I can mark step two complete. For the next step, I need to rename and run the Augment Remote Deployment Manager profile script. Now I can mark step three complete. There are additional steps if you have modified the portal context route. In my case, this is a new portal installation, so I have not. So I should now be able to access my DMGR. And I can. In Chapter 4, I will federate and cluster the primary node. Again, I'll use the configuration wizard. So under Set up a cluster, I'll now click on the Create a Cluster option and follow the wizard. Everything looks good here. Again, my DMGR is on a remote server. On this screen, I'll provide my portal administrator username and password and my database username and password. Now I need the DMGR administrator username and password, which I provided during the created deployment manager steps, provide the custom DMGR profile path I used, and the DMGR host and SOAP port, which by default is 8879. For cluster name, I'll leave the default value. With all my values set, I just need to run these four steps. The first step is to just check if the DMGR and portal machines are within five minutes of each other. And they are, so I'll mark this step complete. Now, the next three steps will take some time to run. On my test machine, steps two and three took about two and three minutes respectively. And step four took about seven minutes. But again, for the sake of time, I'll just skip over that in this video. With all the steps complete, I'll click Finish. I should now be able to hit both Portal and the DMGR. And if I go under Servers, Clusters, I do see my portal cluster. And there's my primary portal server. One last note, if I go back to the cluster guide, it has me enable memory-to-memory -memory replication. This is recommended in case of a failover. 
So on my portal server, under Session Management, click on Distributed Environment Settings, and then click on Memory to Memory Replication, and I'll select My Portal Cluster. I also need to set a custom property, use invalidated ID, and set it to false. Now I do need to restart DMGR, the node agent, and the portal server for these changes to take effect, but this completes the portal cluster setup and thus this video.